The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine. Every day, millions of thrifty women all over America serve parquet margarine because it tastes so good. To market, to market, to get some parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You like it, you love it, like millions who say their favorite margarine is... P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine, made by Kraft. In the great Gildersleeve's town of Summerfield, it's a little after four o'clock in the afternoon, the time when growing kids bring hearty appetites home from school. That you in the refrigerator, Leroy? Uh, it's me, Bertie, home early. You sure are, Mr. Gildersleeve. I just gonna tell Leroy not to touch that potato salad. <laughs> What are we having for dinner, Bertie? Potato salad and whatever else is in there. I thought we'd clean out the icebox tonight and save the roast for tomorrow. Oh? Well, how long does it take the potatoes to turn to salad, Bertie? I'm pretty hungry. <laughs> now, Mr. Gilsey, it's nearly an hour and a half till dinner. That long? I thought the days were getting shorter. No, sir. I think the government's having the sun go down an hour later now. Oh? You want me to rustle you up a snack? Well, just a little something to tide me over. Excuse me, then. This refrigerator ain't big enough for both of us to be looking in at the same time. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll hand it out, Bertie. You just toss it together. Yes, sir. Now, let's see. Eh, one slice of salami. Chicken mix. Tomatoes. Celery. Eee, what's this? From the way you said it, it must be them leftover pig knuckles. Oh, yes. They never look twice the same, do they? <laughs> <laughs> they do look a little tired, Mr. Gillsleeve. But the government says no waste nothing. That's right, Bertie. We won't. Just keep saving them. <laughs> Hello, Leroy. Hi, Bertie. What's in the icebox? Oh, Uncle. Leroy. <laughs> You're a little late, Leroy. Uh, dibs on the potato salad, Uncle. Dibs on the potato salad. Is that any way to ask for it, Leroy? Where are your manners? May I please have the potato salad after you? No. See? What does it get you? Nobody is eating potato salad. That's for dinner. Oh, boy, pig's feet. How about them? Well, what do you think, Bertie? <laughs> Wouldn't break my heart, none. Go ahead, my boy, and I may just sample the potato salad. Yeah, looks good, Bertie. Nice texture. Yes, sir. Oh, pig's feet is swell, too. Don't gnaw those knuckles so closely, Roy. You worry me. <laughs> And what have you done to your finger? Man, I cut it on the playground this afternoon. Let me see. The school nurse attend to it? A little cut? No, I wrapped it myself with scotch tape. Scotch tape? Sure, I want to watch the progress. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Leroy, you march right up and put on a real bandage. But, Uncle, it's only a scratch. What's going on out here? Oh, well, Marjorie, just home from school? Don't mention school. Anyway, it's over for this week, my dear. Have a glass of buttermilk. Don't I wish it was over. Of all the corny weekend assignments. Yeah, potato salad's pretty good, Bertie. Could stand a little more onion. That horrible domestic science class. Every girl has to take care of a baby for an evening. Ah, what a dopey idea. Taking care of a baby? Why, Marjorie, that's an important part of your education. A fine practical experience, my dear. Just think, little Marjorie with a baby. Uncle Mort, please. When all the kids are having fun tonight, I have to go out and take care of somebody's precious little darling. Those are the brakes, Jack. <laughs> Domestic science. I hope I flunk it cold. Now, Marjorie, you couldn't take a more valuable course. You just go out and show them what a good little mother you can be. And then someday, if you and Ben should ever... Ben! I don't know. One of these days, he might come in and take you right away from us. <laughs> well, somebody else, then. <laughs> Honestly, Uncle Mort. Yeah, delicious potato salad, Bertie. Found the onions on the bottom. Yes, sir. All alone with a baby for two hours. I'll just die. There's nothing to do. You'll find there are a lot of little things to do, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 
Yeah, and babies are very amusing. They wiggle their toes, grab your finger, laugh at you, hiccup. You can have a great time with children. You'd rather do that than go dancing every Friday night, wouldn't you? Well, anyway, you'll do it. And don't look at me like that, like you've lost your last friend. You'll probably gain a new one. rock a boy, baby, in the treetop. Oh, shut up, Leroy. <laughs> What's wrong with her? Leroy, you may go upstairs. What did I do? Just because she's touchy about being a mother. Don't try to be smart. <laughs> Someday you may be a father. Me? I'll never take domestic science. <laughs> And leave that plate here. I don't want knuckles all over the house. And while you're up there, put a decent bandage on your finger. Gosh, a guy can't even cut his finger. <laughs> yeah, this is fine salad, Bertie. Here's the bowl. Yes, sir. Mr. Gillsleeve, I guess we'd better have that roast tonight after all. I'll get you in the oven right now if you're in a big hurry for dinner. A hurry? Well, who's in a hurry for dinner? Uh, take your time, Bertie. Think I'll take a little walk. May pick up a few cigars. See you later, Bertie. I declare the eating habits around this house is getting less habitual all the time. Hi, Commissioner. Didn't expect you back in again today. Eh, just passing, Floyd. Had to come in and see who belongs to those feet you have aimed out the window. A friend of yours. Here, I'll take off the towel. Seems as though I should recognize those feet. All right, Gillisleeve. There's only one man in this town who wears out his shoes under the arches first. <laughs> now, see here, Gildy. Well, it is Hooker. <laughs> sure, he's been getting the works, Commish. What have you done to his face, Floyd? He looks like a boiled lobster. I've just had a massage, Gildersleeve. It happens to be very invigorating to the skin. Nonsense. A man doesn't get a massage because it's invigorating. Who is she, Horace? I happen to have a very important business engagement this evening. Hey, you are, Judge. How much, Floyd? Well, let me see. Haircut, shave, massage, shampoo, and tonic. No charge for the murine. That'll be two and a quarter. Hooker, you old rascal, you've got a date. I can tell. There you are, Floyd. Keep the change. Thanks, Judge. Say, Judge, how about getting the Jolly Boys together at the club tonight? Nothing like a little fun after a stale old business engagement. See you again, Floyd. Wait a minute, Judge. Don't you hold on on us. I told you I had a meeting. Just because it's a little beyond your layman's mind to understand why a member of the bar would dress up for a legal appointment is no reason it isn't being done. Yeah, maybe you got the judge all wrong, Commish. They do things like that. Huh? I remember the time me and Lovey went to hear him read her uncle's will. Everybody else was trying to look poor, and there was the lawyer dressed up fit to kill. Of course, the way it turned out, we could have all stayed home. This is not a will reading, Floyd. I happen to be conferring with a new client who just came to town. Yeah, I'll bet she's a client. Well, she is. She? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, she. I knew it. I'll bet she's 92 years old and has 10 sheep ranches in Nevada. Wouldn't you like to know? Brush me off, Floyd. Uh, sure. I don't know how you do it, Hooker. I'm a younger man, a better conversationalist, but do I have a date? No. Well, gosh, Commish, if things are that bad, I got a little black book here I ain't used since... Only 19... kidding, Floyd. Oh. I can get plenty of dates, and I don't have to get them legally. Fact remains, I have one, and apparently you haven't. Wallflower. <laughs> oh, go counter sheep, you old goat. I should call somebody tonight. Get back into circulation. Who can I call? Bullard's wife's second cousin? No, uh, Bullard's home. I saw him through the window. Who else? Face it, Gildersleeve. You don't know a woman in this whole town you can call on tonight. Hooker's right. I'm just a wallflower. <laughs> What can I do for you this afternoon? Hello, Peavy. I was just thinking. It's a fateful thing that more people can't get together. Oh, you've been reading about the Russians again? 
<laughs> no, Peavy. I mean right here in Summerfield. Men and women are getting together. Hmm, didn't know that was a problem in Summerfield. Well, it is. A doctor meets a patient, a lawyer meets a client, but who does the water commissioner meet? I have no way of meeting eligible women. Well, I saw an ad in the paper. It seems the Fuller Brush people are looking for salesmen again. Oh! <laughs> now, Peavy. I didn't think you'd be interested. But now that I recall, Mr. Gildersleeve, a charming young lady just telephoned for you. For me? Well, she said she contemplated spending a very dull evening and wondered if you'd bring along some magazines. Magazines? Who? <laughs> Your niece, Marjorie. Yeah, yeah that's it. <laughs> well, I do feel a little sorry for Marjorie at that. Pretty tough on her, having to sit with a baby on a Friday night. Well, somebody has to do it. Let's see some magazines, Peavy. You like babies, and you know it. Well, they're pretty destructive in a drugstore, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> Seem to have a lot of hands. Let's see. I'll take this ladies' home journal. Got a lot of stuff about babies and that. A and parents' magazine. I beg your pardon, Mr. Gildersleeve, but I believe your niece specified movie magazines. Movie magazines? Oh, well, let's pick out two or three she'd like. I have quite a selection. Now, uh, here are three you might be interested in. I will pick them, Peavy. Let's see what you have. Yeah, here's one with Miss Betty Grable on the cover. Another with Miss Rita Hayworth. Here's Miss Linda Darnell. This one has Mr. Gregory Peck. I'll take the first three. That's what I say. <laughs> How much, Peavy? Well, let's see. Miss Betty Grable is 25. Miss Rita Hayworth... Oh, excuse me, Mr. Gildersleeve. Customer. Customer? Peavy, come back here. What do you think I am? Oh, it's Ben. Hi, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'll be right with you, Ben. Ben, it's nice to see you. Where have you been keeping yourself? We haven't seen you around lately. Oh, I've been around. <laughs> Go ahead, Peavy. Wait on Ben. He's probably in a hurry to get someplace. Well, me? No, I just dropped in. For goodness sake, that's no way to spend Friday evening, Ben, hanging around a drugstore. Why don't you come home with me to dinner? Gosh, I've had dinner over there so much. That was last year. Marjorie was talking about you only this afternoon. She was? Gee, I haven't seen Marjorie. Yes, sir, I think you and Marjorie should spend this evening together. Wait to see what she's doing, Ben. Should be very enlightening. You can help her. Homework? Homework? Huh? Well, after a fashion, eh, PV? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Gildersleeve, but... No I... buts about it, Ben. Bertie has a great big roast, and you're coming home to dinner. And that'll be 75 cents, Mr. Gildersleeve. Huh? Or won't Marjorie be wanting the magazines now that... The magazines? Oh, sure, I'll take them, Peavy. What the heck? Betty Grable, Rita Hayworth, Linda Darnell. Hey, it isn't going to be a bad evening at home after all. <laughs> More from the great Gildersleeve in just a minute, friends. As the parquet reporter, I get to talk to most of the Summerfield folks about parquet, the quality margarine made by Kraft. For example, the other day I combined business with a haircut. Floyd, do you use parquet margarine in your home? Bet your life we do, pal. The wife tells me it's one of the few quality foods that costs less now than it did a year ago. Well, that's a mighty sensible reason for using parquet. Well, yeah, but even if food prices was down to normal, me and Lovey would still stick to parquet. It's that good old parquet flavor that keeps it on our table. It's great stuff. Do you use it just as a spread for bread, Floyd? Pal, we tried it on rolls, muffins, pancakes, waffles, crackers. For my dough, it's tops on all of them. Good for us, too. A lot of vitamin A, I hear. Mm, 15,000 units of vitamin A per pound. That many, huh? Gee. Well, I figure that's important, but the real reason we use parquet at our house is that it tastes so good. Besides, craft product... Quality product. Well, Floyd is right. After all, millions of women all over America serve parquet, the craft quality margarine, because it tastes so good. Be kind to your pocketbook and enjoy the fresh flavor of parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine made by Kraft. <laughs> Between the dark and the daylight, when the night is beginning to lower, comes a pause in the day's occupation when unexpected guests are brought home for the dinner hour. Glad you came along, Ben. No reason why you and Marjorie shouldn't get together tonight. She was worried about how she'd spend the evening. Well, you're sure she didn't have any plans, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, <laughs> none you won't fit into, Ben. You like babies, don't you? 
babies? The kind you sit with. Oh, gosh. I haven't been stepping out much honest, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> no, 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 Ben. Uh, little babies. You like them, don't you? Oh, gosh, no. You don't? Oh, I kind of shy away from babies. Fine. Well, well, come along, Ben. This thing's going to take a little more direction than I thought. Ah, uh, smell that roast, Ben. Uh, you're sure this is okay with Marge? Oh, Marge will be tickled to death. Marjorie! Come on down. I have a big surprise for you. <laughs> Gosh, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what did you say, Uncle Mort? Uh, surprise for you, my dear. Oh, hello, Ben. Uh, hi, Marge. What's the surprise, Uncle Mort? <laughs> Ben is here for dinner. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve asked me. Tonight? Huh? Uncle Mort, you know what I have to do tonight. Oh, well, I think I better be going. But, Ben, you just came. Uh, well, that's okay. Supper's probably ready at home. Supper's ready right here. Bertie! Dinner's ready! You see? Dinner. Honestly, Uncle Mort, of all the evenings to invite Ben over. What? Well, right here, supper's ready. Oh, hi, Ben. Hi, Leroy. You staying for supper? Well, I... Yes, he is. Swell. Let's go out and kick a few after supper. No, Leroy. It'll be too dark. Okay. We can run a few signals in the living room, then. There'll be no signals in the living room. Well, pass a few under the street light, Ben. Well, sure, Leroy. That is... Leroy, it's entirely possible that Ben came over to see Marjorie instead of you. It's also possible they have more important things to do this evening than kick a football. Yeah? Ben isn't going to take care of that baby, is he? Uh, huh? <laughs> Uh, Leroy, you better run up and wash for supper like a good boy. Okay. See you later, Ben. Good boy. <laughs> now, Ben, this feeling you have about little baby. Uncle Moore, don't try to drag Ben in on this. Now, now, my dear. He doesn't want to go with me to sit with a baby all evening, do you, Ben? Will you, Marge? Oh, well, gosh, sure. I like babies. Huh? Yeah. Oh, for goodness sake. Well, Ben, I'm certainly glad to hear it. But Ben can't go. Huh? Ben can't go. Babysitters aren't allowed to have dates. I'm sorry, Ben. Oh, well, that's okay. Now, see here. Ben is going. He can't. Our domestic science teacher says so. It's against the rules. Gosh, I'd hate to get Marge into trouble, Mr. Gildersleeve. It's okay. It's not okay. You two are going over and sit together. But, Unky, parents don't like it, according to domestic science. Well, that's nonsense. What's more domestic than sitting with Ben and a baby? <laughs> I'll go over there and tell the parents right now. Mr. Gillespie, dinner's ready. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, I'll go right after the roast beef then. <laughs> Come along, little family. <laughs> Must be the place. I'll pull in behind their car. Uncle Mort, maybe I'd better go in alone. Yeah. I can always go back to the drugstore. Now, now, you two are going to sit with a baby. I'll fix things with the parents. I'll tell them. Guess this is the right house. What does that sign say? Mm, beware of the dog. <laughs> and where the dog is. Oh! oh. What was that? <laughs> Doormat. Welcome. <laughs> oh, nice living room in there. Fireplace. I'll ring again. Oh! Yes? <laughs> Your fur coat frightened me. At first, I thought it was the dog. <laughs> Cute. Well, I was just getting my furs. I'm going out. Yes, I know. Nice coat. <laughs> oh, I'm Mr. Gildersleeve. Now, about sitting with a baby. Oh, yes. I'm Mrs. Dalrymple. The school said they'd send someone over, but I expected... Are you a veteran? Veteran? <laughs> well, they were going to take me, but things started going pretty well for Pershing, so... Uh... Oh, you, you mean a veteran going to school. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I'm the water commissioner. Oh, you poor man. You shouldn't have to do this sort of thing at night. Huh? I'm afraid you misunderstand me, Mrs. Dal... Uh... Rimple. Rimple. Uh, Dal Rimple. <laughs> it's my niece's assignment. 
That's why I came over to have a little talk with you and Mr. Dalrymple. Mr. Dalrymple? Well, Mr. Dalrymple is no longer with us, but... Oh, sorry. That's all righty. Huh? It's been so long ago. Oh. Nearly a year. Mm. <laughs> now, what about the sitter, Mr. Ryan? Oh, Gildersleeve. Throckmorton P. Isn't that cute? <laughs> I'm so glad to know you, Mr. Gildersleeve. I would ask you in, but I'm leaving in half an hour. Oh, not for a half an hour? Your niece will be here by then? Oh, she's here right now, Mrs. Dalrymple, but she and her boyfriend wanted to be together this evening, so I came over to ask if it'd be all right if both of them... Say! What is it, Mr. Gildersleeve? Why don't I stay with the baby? Anything for the children. Isn't that cute? <laughs> Well, I don't see why not. If it's all righty with the school. I'm a member of the school board. You are? Well, all righty. But you're a little early. Yeah, I know. Half an hour. <laughs> I'll tell the kids to go on and have fun. Be right back, Mrs. Dalrymple. Oh, doormat. Well, welcome. <laughs> Certainly is mighty comfortable here in your living room, Mrs. Dalrymple. But I better get on the job. Mustn't forget what I came for, should I? What about the baby? Baby won't be a bit of trouble, Mr. Gildersleeve. I even leave him alone sometimes with the Duke. The Duke? My dog. Oh, yes. Sounds big. Where is he? Oh, he's in the other room. L look, you can see his nose sticking around the corner. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, he's, he's really very, very gentle. Unless, of course, someone tries to molest baby or me. Oh, uh, well, I'll sit a little further away. <laughs> Large nose. <laughs> now, if you should want to reach me, Mr. Gildersleeve, I'll be at this telephone number. Uh -oh. And if you should want a snack or a glass of water, just go through there to the kitchen. Through there. Well, I wouldn't want to disturb the Duke. Besides, I drank a lot of water down the department this afternoon. <laughs> yes, I, I'm in charge down there. Strange I haven't run into your name in the water department files. Uh, Dalrymple. Dalrymple. Uh, what's the first name? Well, it's Doris. Doris. Doris Dalrymple. <laughs> no, no, I haven't seen it. But then the only names my secretary calls to my attention are the delinquents. Uh, of course, you wouldn't fall into that group. Isn't that cute? <laughs> uh, what did your husband do, Mrs. Dalrymple? He was a manufacturer. Manufacturer? Oh, well, that must have kept him very busy. Yes, it did, Mr. Gildersleeve. Nobody knows better than I do. Well, that's the way it is with a big businessman. Seems he spends more time with his secretary than he does with his wife and family. Very unfortunate situation. Oh, I don't know, Mr. Gildersleeve. Huh? I was Mr. Dalrymple's private secretary for 14 years before we were married. Oh. Uh, well, they say nobody knows a man better than a secretary. <laughs> I'll bet he was a fine man, Mrs. Dalrymple. Oh, yes. We all admired J.W. so. Everybody called him J.W. Such a man of decision. Yes, yes. After 14 years. <laughs> I, I was so surprised when he asked me to marry him, Mr. Gildersleeve. I kept repeating it over and over to myself in front of the mirror in the girls' locker room. You, little Doris Panky, are going to be J.W.'s bride, Mrs. J.W. J.W., and what was his first name? Please, Mr. Gildersleeve, things were never that personal. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> well, marriage is a very wonderful thing, Mrs. Dalrymple. I hope you were very happy. Uh, elderly man? Well, none of us ever thought of J.W. as being old. And we were divinely happy. Mm, of course, I had to give up my job. Oh, of course. And there were parties, dinners. I was rushed right into the social world. A little secretary. Me. And then... And then? Six months later. Yes? It was all over so quickly. He died while signing a check. <laughs> oh, 
Now, now, Mrs. Dalrymple, you've been through some nerve-wracking experiences. You need comfort. Do you think so, Mr. Gildersleeve? Do I? <laughs> Someone in the driveway. Must be my date. I- I'd better slip into my coat. Oh, coat. Here, I'll help you. All righty. <laughs> nice coat. There we are. <sighs> oh, <laughs> missed one of the arms. <laughs> Up we go again. <sighs> there. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Dalrymple, you shouldn't be alone. You've been so kind, Mr. Gildersleeve, and thanks for listening. You've been just peachy. Now, now, I'm taking a personal interest in all this. What you need is company. A lot of people around you. What about tomorrow night? Tomorrow night? Dinner, just you and me. I know, a quiet little place, good for the nerves. Mr. Gildersleeve, I thought you said a lot of people. (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Oh, there's my caller. Do do I look all right? Let's not answer it. Let's pretend we're not home, huh? Oh, (laughs) oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, I'll bet you are a lot of fun. (laughs) Now, I'm sure the baby will be all right, and we'll be back early. Don't worry. Have a good time. Hurry back. Baby's in good hands. Are you sure baby's in good hands, Gildy? Hooker, you old goat. I thought you were out with a new client. I'm going out with her now, Gildy. And beware of the dog. The great Gildersleeve will be right back. Millions of thrifty homemakers are delighted with this fact. Delicious, flavor-fresh parquet margarine costs less today than it cost a year ago. Remember that when you shop tomorrow for a quality spread for bread. Look first for the margarine of craft quality. Look first for parquet. It tastes so good, yet costs you so little. It pays you to buy wisely these days. It pays to buy parquet made by craft. To market, to market, to get some parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You like it, you love it, like millions who say their favorite margarine is. P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine, made by Kraft. (laughs) Well, Gildy, thanks for taking care of the baby. You can go now. We're home. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one who can go home, Horace. Mrs. Dalrymple and I have to make out the report. What report, Mr. Gildersleeve? Uh, the report for Marjorie's domestic science class. Run along, Judge. But Gildy... That's the boy. <laughs> well, a three-page report. Both sides. Come along, Mrs. Dalrymple. There's work to be done. Isn't that cute? <laughs> Good night, folks. Get out of here. <laughs> the Great Gilders Lead is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Elliott and Andy White with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Louise Erickson, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Wall saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Tomorrow night, Bing Crosby will be Al Jolson's guest on the Kraft Music Hall heard over this NBC station. Don't miss this fabulous pair. Remember, tomorrow night, for exact time, see your local paper. And listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further Adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Good night. If you pack lunches for school-going children and hungry, hard-working grown-ups... Surprise them someday this week with the appetizing cheddar cheese flavor of Pabstep. This delicious cheddar cheese food is wonderfully nourishing in sandwiches. And you can cut Pabstep into neat wedges, too, for a tasty flavored treat with red apples for dessert. Get Pabstep in the variety your family prefers. Mellow, golden cheddar, or pimento. Ask for P-A-B-S-T hyphen E-T-T. Pabstep cheese food when you shop tomorrow. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.